This is Copenhagen, population 1.2 million. Bikes are everywhere, buses are full, there's a new metro under construction, and the focus is on creating quality urban life. Pedestrianisation in the city centre began in the 1960s, when in reaction to growing traffic congestion, the main street was simply closed off to cars. This now forms the core of a huge network of pedestrian streets, which are popular with the public and include the most desirable shopping destinations. The pedestrian areas have demonstrated the possibilities in quality of urban life when cars are deprioritised. So what we'll do is go and have a look at how cycling and public transport have enabled people to leave their cars behind. Now of course bikes are incredibly popular here. Journey to work for bike is right up at 36%. Car 29, PT 28 and walk 7. To give us an idea of cycle traffic volumes, this counter shows 302,000 inbound bicycles this year. Not bad for February. So let's calibrate our speed here, then head off to Norabrugada, another of the main bike corridors heading out of the city. Nice to see people enjoying the winter sunshine on the bridge there. Main routes like this one have what's called a green wave, which means the signals are phased to about 20 km per hour, which is fairly comfortable riding speed. We'll try to catch as many greens as we can. You can see over here they use island bus stops, which means waiting or alighting passengers don't obstruct the bike lane, letting the bike traffic flow smoothly. The street uses the Copenhagen style bike lane, which has a double curb construction, with a half curb up to a raised bike lane, which is then slightly cambered down to allow for a second curb up to the footpath. This provides complete separation and safety for cyclists and pedestrians, while blue lane marking provides extra visibility at intersections. On the left here, you can see a red bus only section, which was implemented three years ago effectively closing the street to through traffic by car and reducing bus travel times by 10%. So we're right in the middle of the afternoon peak here and you can really get a feel for how quiet things are without all the noise from the afternoon traffic. This route is part of the PlusNet, which includes a new standard for these fantastic 3 meter wide bike lanes, equivalent to 3 bike widths. This enables what they call conversation cycling, which means two people can ride, holding a comfortable conversation, uninterrupted by a third person passing. Now trip lengths are much shorter here than in a dispersed city like Melbourne, but looking at mode share, we see that bikes retain their dominance out to beyond 10 kilometers. So while most trip lengths are short, even for longer trips, people are still choosing to cycle. Another reason for the three lane bike paths is to accommodate cargo bikes, which are now owned by 28% of two child families. Now in both Melbourne and Copenhagen, cyclists themselves are actually prepared to travel similar distances, with one third of bike trips over five kilometres in both cities. And in Melbourne, 
half of all trips are less than 5 kilometres. Just imagine how Melbourne would look with even half Copenhagen's bike mode share for trips up to 5 kilometres. The safety data shows that as car drivers learn to anticipate passing bicycles, accident rates have fallen. The annual user satisfaction survey shows 95% satisfaction with Copenhagen as a cycling city, which reflects decades of infrastructure investment here. However, as bicycle traffic grows, there's always a need for improvement. Here you can see a bit of crowding as the lane narrows down to allow for a left-hand turn bay. Up ahead is one of the metro station construction sites. They're building a third underground metro line to add to the existing two. There are at least 10 such sites dotted around the inner city, all under full construction, recognisable by their distinctive green hoardings. And on the flyover up ahead is a passing train with a black bike carriage in the middle, which is fitted with bike racks for about 20 bikes. Norabru Gadda is also a major bus corridor, serviced by one high-frequency A route. There is a bus every three minutes or so, and they're quite full and have balanced loads in both directions. So we're coming to the end of our run, which has averaged about 18 km per hour at a very relaxed pace. From experience in Melbourne, cyclists are made to work much harder under more dangerous conditions to achieve that kind of average speed. And that seems to be the lesson here. People are being invited to cycle in safety, comfort and convenience, and they're grateful for the opportunity. So fittingly, at this red light, we're welcomed by a convenient footrest, which also doubles as a route map. These are the new Go Bike City Hire Bikes, which are battery powered for extra range. They're being pitched as a coverage extender for the PT system and they've got a GPS unit which lets you reserve the bike and have it waiting at the train station or use it as a map with interactive tourist info. And here's another example of a controlled turn for cyclists with separate lanes and mini signals for straight or right hand turns. Besides the flashy infrastructure there are constant small and low cost improvements to the cycling experience all over the network. Turning to the PT system, bus services are frequent and extensive, and there's a fair bit of interchange at train stations. As we saw, the metro project is under full construction. The excavated dirt is being brought out to the edge of the city, where a land reclamation project is creating the city's strategic land supply. Now to finish up, let's have a look at the metro. The first line opened in 2002. It's driverless and runs 24 seven. The metro is frequent with two minute headways during the day. It runs small three car sets. And of course, outside the peaks, bicycles are allowed. Let's jump on. Hvis du er rejsesfutter, så tjek ud. Amager, 